and welcome back to Ran Sweat. Not gonna introduce it, let's just go. What were you planning? I wasn't planning anything. Holy sh shit stone, what? Okay, he really is breaking down. Don't lie! Detective. What? I... We should talk, J Not right now, Blunt. There's no time! Where were you that night? I was home! Why did you do it? I... Answer me! Did someone ask you to kill them? Well? How did you get the gun, Johnny? Detective, I need to discuss something right now. I need to show you something important. What? Does it have to be now? Yes. Now. It has to do with this case. It can't wait. Fine, but make it quick. Nest quick. I'm hungry, so there's just going to be a lot of <laughs> food references here. Okay. What is it? We don't have much time. I can't let another suspect slip through my fingers. Nothing, detective. You just need to calm down. What's gotten into you? You're just screaming at him and scaring him. You're not even letting him speak. You need to go easy. In any case, we have no solid evidence that it was him. What the hell is going on here? Uh-oh. Who gave you the authority to use this room and to arrest the citizens of this town? Let me question Johnny. He murdered them. Look who's jumping to conclusions now. Officer Blunt, I'm disappointed in you. Supporting such nonsense. Now go on and release Johnny. Oh, maybe I should have said the other thing. I didn't think he was going to say that last part. I thought he was just going to say, let me question Johnny. You know, he was taking pictures of Chris and Diane and maybe he'll know more. Like, I thought he'd say something sensible, but apparently not, Stone. No, he's a suspect. Do not say a word, detective. This is out of your jurisdiction. You were supposed to leave town this morning. But Johnny is the murderer. He's done it. He had a room full of their pictures. Is there anyone left in this town that you haven't blamed yet? Yeah, you bitch. You want some too? Yesterday you were after Father Smith. Half of this town is involved according to you. You even managed to burn down a room in our hotel. Who are you going to question next? Me? Maybe. What are you really trying to do here, detective? Have you been looking at this case objectively, or do you need to catch someone, anyone at all costs, even if they're innocent? You're obsessed with the thought of finding someone that's responsible, even if you have to make it all up. There's no case here, detective. It was murder-suicide. I won't let you pull my town into your mess, whatever your motivations may be. I mean, I do... <laughs> this is an interesting way to spin this story, where it really does seem like everyone has an agenda. But then what's the hurry to close a case? Just because the festival... Why the hurry to wear us, Johnny? Has your arrogance blinded you? Did you even bother looking for evidence before arresting Johnny? Look at this. Mrs. Brown just came over to the station, too, with it. Can you see what it is? It's a photograph. This was one of the photos in his room full of pictures. One that you conveniently missed. What can you see in the picture? Uh... Pixels? That's Johnny's house, right? It's Johnny's house. Look at the time it was taken. Okay, I'm just gonna state. October 7th, 12.15 a.m. And what happened during the early hours of the 7th of October, Detective? The shootings. 12.15. That's when Mr. Willis heard the shot. Johnny lives about 10 minutes away from Chris and Diane's house. I don't understand. How could he have been over at Chris's place and be at home at the same time to take this picture, huh? How could he have taken this picture of his own home at the same time as the shootings? I don't know. Why was he taking a picture of his own house? Johnny's weird. Exactly. You don't know what you're doing, Detective. Finally, you admit it. You've wasted everyone's time and energy. You should be happy I'm just letting you walk after all you've done. Just... Get out of this town now. Just go. Ah. Uh, boy. Sad Detective Stone. Hmm. 
Oh, man. Damn, he's actually getting ready. Wow, Doctor, you just wear your scrubs all the time? See, they've given you a new room. It's only temporary. It's just so they could dump my bag somewhere for the day. I'm not staying. Can't, actually. Yeah, that's a pity. Jack's brought your car. It's been fixed. That's good. I'm here with Officer Blunt. She's waiting outside. Oh, okay. I'll just be a minute. No, it's not that. She's worried. I don't know what you want me to say or do, Doc. Talk to her. What about? Whatever you've been carrying with you all these days, tell her, please. It'll do you good to talk about it to a friend. And I think you see her as a friend, right? Yeah, you could say that. You could also say spaghetti. Well, great then. And have a good drive back home. I hope we can meet again under different circumstances, hopefully. Thanks, Doc. You take care, too. Hmm. Oh, boy. That is such a beautiful design for a uh, little kind of hotel lodge sort of thing. <sighs> I guess I should go talk to her. Oh, good. Are we finally going to have our personal moment? That makes me happy. Hey, Michael. So you're really leaving, huh? What choice do I have? It's over. So, what will you do when you go back? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Oh. I really thought we were going to figure it all out. Even if it is murder-suicide. I wish we had some proof. Or some answers. I feel like I've come to know them over the past few days. And I know it was going sour towards the end, but... To kill themselves. I wonder what really pushed them to it. Do you think they did it? Hmm. You know what, at this point, I'm going to answer for myself and not for him. I don't know. Plus, I want him to say something that's a little bit reasonable now. <laughs> it's possible. Really? You know, my dad, he... Hmm? Never really told you about him, did I? When I was ten, he killed himself. Gunshot to the head. Sorry, Amy. I was there when it happened. I ran down to see where the loud bang had come from. Oh, that's horrible. There he was, sat in his favorite chair, with a gun in his hand, and... Mother tried explaining it best she could. He was sad, she said. I could barely make sense of it at the time. Why was he unhappy? Wasn't our family enough? Did I not make him happy? Could I have done anything to change it? But of course, I was ten. What could I have done? I tried figuring out what led to his depression. For months, I went over his last days with us. I don't remember much, but... I recall he changed in some ways during the last couple of days. I couldn't understand it then, but it just felt off. He didn't feel like the dad I knew, even though he acted it. Detective, the thing is, I don't know if you've always been this way. I don't think you have. I think you used to be different. The way you are, or have become you remind me so much of him you remind me of the way he changed during his last days it feels the same and I was only 10 then and I was helpless but I'm older now 
I understand people. And I'm a police officer, for God's sake. I can't... I can't let that happen again. I won't let it. Amy, I... What's wrong, Michael? Please. I... I need to know. What's making you suffer this way? What happened to Abigail, Michael? <sighs> okay. Abigail is... was... my wife. God, it's hard to talk about this. To finally talk to someone. All right. Here we go. We met when we were at university. I'd sit in the library every day after classes, studying up on different subjects, buried in books. She sat on the same table as me once, but didn't say anything. I didn't either. I didn't really know her well. We saw each other in the hallways, shared a class or two. Despite that, she stood out to me. She looked different from the rest. Like a sensible, balanced, mature person, you know? <laughs> that can be rare sometimes. That went on for a couple of weeks. She never said anything, nor did I. We'd just share a table. But I'd become comfortable in her presence, and that was rare too. One day, I very uncharacteristically caught myself looking at her. So did she. Hi. Um, hello. You're a slow reader. <laughs> okay. I, what? You've been reading that book for weeks now. It's a dense subject, and, well, yeah, actually, I am a slow reader. Why don't you take the book home with you? I like the atmosphere here. Hmm. I know what you mean. Me too. Ace. Do you want to take a break? Go somewhere? She was confident, understanding, and really, really patient. I love that. We quickly became inseparable, often spending hours together doing our own thing without saying a word to each other. We didn't need to talk, plan, or do much to have fun together. And being around each other was enough. Her company was meditative. Being with me gave her the same feeling of peace and calm that she gave me. Aww. Obviously, a couple of years after graduation, we were married. Yeah, obviously. So obvious, because that's what everyone does. They get married. Nothing spectacular or out of the ordinary happened leading up to our marriage. That's just the way we were. That was bliss for us. We were a bedrock, a foundation for each other. She meant everything to me. Everything. Which is why I can't come to terms with what I've done. This year, on April 7th, we were about to go out for dinner. We'd been married two years at this time. God. Hey, Michael, you ready to go? Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on, I think I forgot something. I'll be right back. The phone rang. I should never have answered it. All right. Oh, boy. Armand sure does like that slatted looking wall thing. Where, where, where's the phone? Phone? Hi, phone. Phone, hello? Oh. Does that look like a fancy... It looks like fancy fast food packaging. Hello? Boss? Sorry to call you at home. What's up? We just received a call from an informant. Apparently he has info that he wants to share about Alex. Where is he? He's near the intersection at 22nd and 9th Avenue. I should just say at 22nd and 9th. 
You're not going to see him right now, are you, boss? Well, I mean, he's at an intersection, so... Like, what? I'm headed that way anyway. A couple of questions won't take any time. How about tomorrow? He could be gone by tomorrow, Warren. He could change his mind. Alice could find out and try to silence him. Hmm. It's just an informant. We have our first lead in months. Let's not mess it up. All right, I'll join you ASAP. Wait for me. Hurry up. Alex was a suspect in a major case, and I'd been trying to pin down for months. I was convinced he was the key to unlocking the case, but my boss felt I was getting obsessed in tunnel vision. Hmm, why does that sound familiar? He wanted me to give up on it and pursue other leads. Alex kept slipping away like a rat. After months of silence, here was a chance to make a breakthrough at least. You ready to go? I'll just be a minute, all right? Why now? Where are you going? Something urgent's come up. I'll be back in a minute. Ah, so this is why it starts with like this. Okay, I get it. All right, so where's the intersection? Okay. He'd been told to wait outside the cafe. Okay. Guess I wasn't going to read that. <laughs> wait, should I have gone left? Because there's one person standing off right there. Oh, there we go. That's why. He'd been told to wait outside the cafe near... Okay, or don't don't let me read it again. I'm fine. Oh, I don't go that way. All right, fine. Okay. Let's go. Let's cross the street. I remember the color of that sky that evening. A pale peach. Can, can you... All right. I remember the color of the sky that evening. A pale peach slowly turning darker as the sun set. All right. Gonna have to fix that. The rush in the streets, the traffic, the sounds, the lights. The whole place was so alive, vibrant. Part of me, oh, come on. Okay. Part of me wanted to dro just drop the whole thing and get back to Abigail, but I couldn't. I had to see the informant. This could be big, all right. Well, I'm not even gonna try to read that. Let's just head on to the place, okay. So once we see what actually happens, I'm going to tell you what I thought happened. The smell of coffee, the laughter, and voices of the people drifting from the cafe. All right. Standing there, watching those people in there, happy, cozy, and warm, I realized I wanted that. Not this. All right. A speeding car broke me out of my daydream. Seconds later, I heard gunshots. Oh, shit. I ran back to my car as fast as I could. It couldn't be. Of course not. Why did I bring her along, though? No, I was just freaking out. Everything would be fine. Getting back seemed to take a million years, and a million thoughts. I remember looking up at the sky, it still looked the same. Okay. Oh, man. And it's cool how there's, like, no detail to the things that didn't matter, but detail to the, to the things he remembered, like the traffic lights and the sky and the cafe and the car. Oh, damn. Seeing Abigail dead, my world fell apart. There was no reason for me to carry on. Alex had been in the area. He knew of me. He knew I was after him. He knew the car I drove. I had been careless, irresponsible, and she paid the price. I don't know if he thought I was in the car or just wanted to spite me. He just drove past my car and opened fire. But one thought stopped me from doing anything to myself. Find him. Make him pay. That was the only thing that kept me alive at that moment. I was back at work the very next day. I didn't dare allow myself the time to think about it. The informant had run away. I would have to start looking for Alex again. But that gave me purpose. Wouldn't they have been like, hey, you should probably take leave and also not be on the case? I didn't get a chance to do that, though. They found Alice the next day dead. He was killed in a shooting that broke out when a deal went bad. A meaningless death in a back alley, fit for scum like him. But why now? Why not a day before? Why did he have to take Abigail away just one day before that? Just one day. And I took her there. I made it happen. I took her to the wrong place at the wrong time. I'd lost that purpose, too. 
but I carried on for some reason, aimlessly. I kept coming to work every day. Chief asked me to take a few days off, but work was the only thing keeping me sane. Or sedated. I stopped going home and started staying at a motel. I didn't want to see that house again without her. I put myself completely into my work during the day, and at night I'd be so tired that I'd go to sleep right after work. I eventually stabilized. I got into a rhythm of living without thinking of her or of anything. I managed to shut away all thoughts and memories of her. It was the only way I could live. It slowly developed into a new life, an almost normal life. Work was all that mattered. Not thinking about her became second nature. And I hadn't thought about her at all for months, until I was sent here. There are so many moments, small, beautiful, that I've buried inside and tried to forget. Because it hurts so much to think of how good it was. It's scary to move on. And every day that goes by moves me further away from the last time that I saw her. She keeps becoming a part of the past with every passing second. With time, I've forgotten so much has happened. I can only remember a few big moments. The other smaller moments have dissolved around them. They're like small islands. Archipelagos, you know? A few memories still sticking out in the sea. But every day the numbers grow lesser and the islands become smaller disappear one by one. I'm scared of that. Soon it'll be one year since it happened. Then two. Then ten. I'll move on and she'll become unimportant in my life. How is that right? It would be comfortable, convenient to move on, to feel better. But do I deserve that? How can I be happy again after my actions killed her? She wasn't just my wife, you know. It isn't just my loss. She was her own person with her own life, dreams, ambitions. And I took all that away from her. Michael, she knows that you loved her. It wasn't intentional. And she won't become unimportant to you. That will never happen. Believe me, that voice telling you that it was your fault, that you could have done something, you need to stop listening to it. She wouldn't want you to blame yourself, would she? Even then, I just miss her so damn much. I feel like I can't risk being happy anymore. I don't want to see what follows when you lose something good. The bad times don't invalidate the good, Michael. They're both real. I know what you mean. But I just can't bring myself to live that. To live without a burden. You're right, you know. I wasn't always this way. I used to be different. I was never this impulsive. Never made decisions without thinking things through and considering every possibility. The way I am these days, that isn't me. It's only since I've come here. I feel I have no self-control. I feel I need to find someone responsible. To make someone pay. Anyone. I feel like I could explode at any moment and kill someone. Someone responsible. Just... Just because I couldn't... Oh. Of course. Oh! Was that a light bulb? What? Well, we are going to find out what that light bulb illuminated in the next episode because I am hungry and tired and I also think this is a good way to end it. <laughs> oh, I'm really glad he finally came forward about it. But like what I thought happened, he was driving drunk or something and they got into an accident and she died instead of him. And that that's why, like, there was the car and, you know, her saying, like, you did this to me, it was your fault. I wasn't thinking that it was something like this that had to do with the case. Then, as, like, she started to show up and talk about how important it was that he, you know, solve this case, that's when I started thinking, oh, okay, no, maybe somebody else did something to her 
and she's blaming him for not being able to find out who did it. Um, and so I guess that was kind of half right in that he didn't technically solve that case because the guy who did it got killed. Um, but I thought it was just that the guy who did it got away because he never knew. Um, and that that's why now he's so obsessed with solving this case. Um, but anyway, yeah, very interesting story. Very interesting uh, elements being thrown here all at once. So we can check out the next episode together. Again, I don't know how much longer this game is, but we're going to keep going. We're going to keep on plodding through it because it's worth it. And so if you haven't subscribed already, this is something I never say, but I'm going to say it now. Subscribe so you know when more episodes of this are coming out because I really think Armand did a very good job with this game and it deserves to be played. It deserves to be watched. It just deserves some attention. <laughs>